Happy Monday. I'm Marlon Bowling with you as we get ready to kick off our trading week and we welcome to the show Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois. Rich, how are you doing this morning to kick off the week? Doing just fine. Looking forward to what could be an exciting week in front of us here and maybe even a, a change in direction. We'll see about that. here. Now, why do you say that? I think uh, possibly after weeks, if not actually a full year of this NAFTA discussion being pushed back week after week after month after month, maybe now we're going to get some progress made. Uh, latest discussions is we're going to resume here today with uh, uh, further NAFTA negotiations. And from the Mexican official standpoint, at least, looks like we might get some progress made here. Okay. Well, what does that mean for Canada if they would come to an agreement between the U.S. and Mexico? You know, obviously, we still have to work out uh, any further discussions with Canada once we go to a trilateral phase. But at least in terms of making this issue move past uh, our point of concern, I think that might be the key issue that many people are looking for in this market right now. All right. Explain something for us, if you would. <clears throat> so you have potentially positive developments here on the trade front. And yet, if you look at the overnight trade, you would think the trade would be uh, enthusiastic about that. The trade was lower overnight. Now let's take a look at our corn and soybean and wheat market activity here. So a first look at the corn trade this morning has September down three and a quarter, Rich, at 345 and a quarter. If we go to the soybean side here, we're uh, lower by double digits, down 12 and three quarters at 829 and a quarter. And in the wheat trade in Chicago wheat, we have September down seven and three quarters at 507. What is going on? Why is nobody caring about a trade deal? Now, I think the other thing we have to deal with here for today's discussion, at least, is the results from the uh, Friday's uh, Pro Farmer uh, release of nationwide yield estimates. Uh, they actually gave the trade people a little bit of surprise here. Uh, they suggest a nationwide corn yield of 177.3, a little under USDA of 178.4. But the numbers on soybeans were maybe a little more uh, of interest here. 53 bushels an acre, USDA, the most recent gas, 51.6. All right, so at 53 bushels an acre, that would translate into what? Record carryout? And, you know, I sure there could be another addition to what USDA just, just last month, 785 million bushels. So we might see something just over 800 million bushels from USDA on the September supply demand report. So uh, what could be a big situation getting even bigger uh, on these numbers here. Now, why the weakness in the wheat trade here? And that's definitely a great, uh, great discussion point, especially when looking at the fact that uh, I believe the EU uh, crop monitor, uh, they call themselves MARS, uh, they actually lowered estimates uh, for all kinds of crops around the EU over the weekend, so that actually is a little more uh, bullish on top. Or, uh, having said that, though, looks like the trade noting that uh, winter wheat uh, harvest in the U.S. Uh, obviously wrapping up. We are seeing some uh, protein numbers come out of this uh, crop a bit more than last year, so perhaps a better crop in that respect, uh, calming some of the fears about tight, uh, tight numbers here. Hmm, interesting. Okay, Rich, sit tight. Uh, we'll come back here in just a little bit, and we'll talk about what to expect in our livestock trade on a Monday. Our guest is Rich Nelson, and we'll be back after this. Let's go back to our talk with Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated. And Rich, as we look at our livestock trade here this morning, I guess the first item that we need to cover on the agenda would be the cattle on feed report that came out Friday afternoon. We have those numbers in case anyone missed it. Let's take a look. The on-feed number officially came in 5% higher than a year ago at 105%. The average trade guess had been hovering around 104 and a half. Now the placements number, that one uh, once again has caught a lot of attention. Uh, the average trade guess, although it was a very wide range, the average guess was 106.4. It came in at 108%. And the marketing's number was expected to be around 105% of a year ago, or a 5% increase, and it came in right at 105%, so no um, surprise there. But that placements number, you had cautioned everyone last week right here on this program, Rich, that you thought it would be up around 108 point something. Uh, you thought the average trade guess was too low. Well, you nailed it, so hat tip to you. Uh, you were right uh, very close to being exactly on target with that. What made you think that? 
you know, really the, uh, the sale bar numbers in terms of the volume going through the auction markets here last month, uh, that's actually okay. factual information. So that gave us the, uh, the initial uh, surprise there as far as the, the higher numbers. And also this does come against what should be uh, a, a discussion about profitability. Camel feeders have been losing some respectable numbers here in recent months, and they should be cutting back on placements. So this high number also goes against some of the profitability concerns. So on this one, you could say it was a surprise, but no doubt the numbers uh, didn't lie once we also uh, looked down and, and, and looked at them here. When we look at our livestock summary from Friday, we have a cash cattle trade that developed out in the plains, and it looks like the market was, what, down a couple of bucks again from what we had had early in the week or maybe from the week before. It looks like we were down around $107 per hundredweight out there on a live basis. I'm uh, seeing prices on a dress basis anywhere from about 168 all the way up to 170 That would be uh, three to five lower, I guess, than the previous week on the dress basis sales, huh? Exactly right. I think a trade's a little concerned about the fact we did see some falling prices, despite the fact that uh, numbers uh, for last week's uh, kill was actually a little lower than the previous week. And obviously, we have some numbers this week which uh, which are going to try and push into uh, the uh, the limited slaughter uh, time frame before next week's uh, holiday-related delays. So, on the supply end, maybe some questions. But in general, should see uh, still a continued decline in numbers as we go into uh, September here. Okay, and I wanted to remind everybody the uh, beef cutout values Friday afternoon also were down. So keep that in mind today as we get into our daytime session. Rich, always good to visit with you. I appreciate that. Uh, Rich Nelson is with Allendale Incorporated. He's based in McHenry, Illinois.